that he's on his own sprue. So he just, like he just can't buy him by himself. No, that's not allowed. Can't have him. You either buy the metal one if you want a standalone, or you spend thirty two fifty and get a war boss and five knobs. There's no middle ground if you want a war boss in plastic. You just can't. You can't get a standalone one. Why is that? What have they done that for? Hello, my name is Kerry Roth, and today we are going to do a cheeky range review for the Orcs, because you keep asking me over and over again, when are you going to do Orcs? Are you going to do Orcs? Get on with it and do Orcs. So we're going to do Orcs, and I'm going to release it today. I wasn't planning to release this video until next week. Instead, I was going to do some new old and community spotlight stuff, but I've been absolutely annihilated with tech issues all damn week and cannot get my stuff to work for more than like half an hour at a time, which makes editing videos that have a million cuts in them borderline impossible. So instead, you've got Orcs today, and I hope you enjoy it because I think this is going to be quite an up and down one, I'll be honest. I haven't looked through the range properly for a little bit, but I thought we'd start out with uh, with the, the, the absolute biggest, bestest, in the form of the Orc Stomper. So there's a vague order to these. Go through the vehicles and stuff first, and then get onto the uh, the infantry. Starting with the Stomper, because the Stomper is legendary. I... Hmm. Alright, I say it's legendary. I do like the Stomper. Don't get me wrong. I like the Stomper. But. But. I feel this is one of those vehicles where where it would be... The temptation to just add a bunch of extra stuff is surely too much to ignore because it does, of course, look very, very orky. You've got the massive, like, armoured body that's a bit like a skirt in a way. You've got a huge, massive cannon and a bunch of missiles on one arm, which is all fine and good. The chainsaw is amazing, and I love it. I just feel like this... This of all their vehicles is one that deserves more DACA. I feel like this particular one, it just needs more. It needs more DACA. It needs more guns by far than it actually has. I really like the design of it. I really like the shape of it. I like the like the mad head and the fact that there is such a massive gun on one arm. But there's only, there's a massive gun on one arm, but there could be so many more. There could be so many more. There should be so many more. I would want to see guns bristling out of the out of like the body of it. Like a a gun for an eye. All that sort of thing. I do like the overall design of it. I just feel like it, it needs to be that little bit more than it is. But it is a fantastic starting point. And let's be honest, if you're collecting orcs, the chances are you will have a metric shed load of guns left over from other kits, unless you've used all of them on the one. And so you can easily add a bit extra onto it. Even if they don't do anything on the tabletop, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that you cover your stuff in guns. This is a prime example of something that needs that. That needs that just extra touch to make it perfect, in my opinion. Moving on to the Gorkonaut, I feel like for the size of the Gorkonaut, actually, it has a reasonable number of guns. I think this is actually quite a cool unit. I do like it. I wasn't sure um, when it was first released, but it's grown on me a lot. The Gorkonaut and the Morkonaut, which, I mean, let's face it, are borderline the same thing, both do look pretty cool. They look pretty funny. They look pretty funky. There is a decent amount of weaponry on them. You can, of course, get away with adding a little bit more, but it's not... It feels it feels more kind of... More saturated in guns than the Stomper does for its size. When you look at the Stomper, there's multiple points where you can go, okay, I could stick extra weapons on that. The Gorkonaut actually, you know, size to guns-wise, is not doing too bad. You've got that massive, like, rotary, rotary cannon on one arm, a bunch of shooters strapped to the power claw that's also... Like a chain, like a chainsaw as well. You've got the missiles on top, the gun sticking out the center. It's doing all right. It's a nice shrunk down version of the Stomper, actually. I think they've reduced it and made it still look viable, which is, which I think is a bit of an achievement because the Stomper is a very specific design, and the uh, the Gorkonaut being somewhat similar but not the same actually works pretty damn well. Of course, the same goes for the uh, the Gorkonaut too, pretty much. Well, Morkonaut, Gorkonaut, I get them the wrong way around every time. I'm assuming that everyone else does, because that's the whole point. But still, a little bit frustrating here and there. 
Also, the uh, the fact that you can actually open the doors <laughs> in the stomach, I like that a lot. It's a nice touch. They could they didn't have to do that, but they did, and I like it. So look how thick the armor is as well on those doors. It's massive. Not getting to get through that with most stuff, are you? Christ. Okay, sticking with the Walker theme, the Death Dread. I love this kit. I love the Death Dread. I honestly think it's one of the best vehicles Games Workshop makes. It's mental. It's mad. It has, you know, you, you can, you can have it with three arms. I mean, obviously, the way it's put together, you're supposed to have the three arms on one side. But you can, to you could totally mess about with it and do it the other way if you wanted to. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with this. The, the fact it's so asymmetrical, with there being like two arms on one side and guns on the other side, is really fun. You do have. You know, four exhausts, which kind of come out at similar angles, but the fact the exhausts are different on one side than the other makes a huge difference. It's just, it's just a really fun, like I think, well-designed model. It just looks great. In fact, actually, yeah, can you have the? Can you have four arms? So you can have two on either side. It looks like you can from that red one there. I didn't even realise you could do that. I have to admit, I prefer the, uh, I prefer the skull face on the front of it. But, I mean, there's just so many fun things you can do with this. It's it's still clanking and nightmarish, but it is actually quite menacing. And it's just, it is, it's perfect orc. Perfect. Horrendous to look at. You don't want to get anywhere near it. You're not entirely sure why it works. You just know that it does, and it will tear you in half. It's, it's, it's spot on. Similarly, the killer cans. I do like the killer cans. Now, I did have killer cans back in the day. Uh, they were metal. They were awful. I hated putting them together. They fell apart at the top, at the drop of a hat. But I, I like them a lot. They've got a special, a special place in my heart. The killer can. They just so, <laughs> like, like especially compared to like the actual death dread. They are actually surprisingly small, and you you don't really feel like they should be able to walk with how overbalanced they are with some of the weapons they've got. But. I don't know. There's there's just a charm to them. There is a charm to the killer cans. They they just they, they still look good. They look good. They 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 daft, but in the best possible way. Yeah, I do. I do. I love a killer can. Hated mine. <laughs> As I say, they just fell apart randomly. It was really bad. You had to pin them, otherwise you you just no matter what you did, they would just fall apart instantly. But. They are cool models, and now they're plastic, that's not even an issue anymore, so, yeah, I do, I do like the killer cans a lot. Now, the battle wagon, I have mixed feelings on the battle wagon. On the one hand, I like the model. The model's cool. It's, it's, surprisingly, uh, it's surprisingly sleek, in a way, for an org vehicle. The only thing I'm not, the only thing I don't like about the battle wagon, and this is something that applies to just org vehicles in general, is that it has now a distinct look, a distinct shape. It's like, that's what a battle wagon is. Whereas, converting your own battle wagon, I feel, is so much more fun. My, like, my battle wagon that I had was part of a... It was a Land Raider with some Chimera parts and a big... Like, a big engine that stuck out the front. I don't have any pictures of it, and I don't think I've got it anymore, unfortunately. But it had, like, a massive engine sticking out the front of it that was made of all, all sorts of stuff, like... Last cannons and and like exhausts and various other things. I I much prefer the do-it-yourself approach to the battle wagon, but I will absolutely say that if you don't want to do it yourself, if you if you want just a buy it, put it together, you've got the thing that you need sort of kit. I, I mean, there's there's really nothing to complain about with the actual battle wagon model. I think it's a good-looking model. I think it, it's I mean it's got plenty of options for a start. Um, being able to actually have the roof attached or not attached, and then the turret on top of that. I think it's a good kit. I definitely think it's a good kit, and I think it's a, I think it's a good-looking vehicle and a very orc-looking vehicle. But I would always personally angle towards, towards just building my own. You know, it's not bad by any means, and I can appreciate it from like a, like an aesthetic standpoint, but. I always feel like a battle wagon needs to be needs to be specific and and uh, appropriate for the individual orc army, not all orc armies. But a lot of that 
you know, as with all of this stuff, as with everything in these range reviews, it's it's all down to personal preference. And me having a, a borderline obsession with kit bashing literally everything I can get my hands on, you would expect that from someone who enjoys that side of the hobby that they'd want to, you know, essentially build their own instead of just buy a ready-made one. But there's nothing wrong with the ready-made one at all. I think it's a good-looking model. I especially think that the uh, the big kind of armor plate dozer blade thing on the front is a really cool piece. It's actually quite a versatile piece. You can use it on things like Imperial Knights to convert them to Orcish stuff. You can stick them on your own, you know, version of a battle wagon. There's lots of... It's a good kit for plundering as well with the, with the tracks and the wheels and the cab and kind of the way it goes together. You can, you can use it to make the basis of your own take on one of these. And it'd still be recognisable, but you could very much use it to put your own twist on stuff. I do like it. It is a good kit. And it is a good-looking vehicle. Now, the truck, the Orc truck, this is another thing where I personally would want to make my own. But I have to admit, I really do like the Orc truck a lot. <laughs> I like, hang on a sec. So, on the, the... Actually, on the site... So, that's an actual Orc truck. That's actual Orc truck. I like the fact that... <laughs> There's, there's stuff on here that is not the model at all, although that's pretty funny. Um, there's stuff that is just a rhino that's been converted. I like that they put those on there. That's cool. That's fun. Yeah, this is another one. I do really like the actual model, and I like the uh, like the blower on the engine. That's a nice touch. That's kind of cool. that's kind of fun. The different options and like the boarding ramps and stuff. I like a lot. It's it is a, again it's a good looking model and the thing with a lot of these as well is that if you are someone who wants to just kit bash and convert to your heart's content using you know for your orc army the orc kits are completely like just because you're because you are playing orcs you can totally get their kits not build the things that they're supposed to build and just use the parts infinitely on any other kit you feel like you know there there's a lot of stuff in that can be applied to other stuff. Like that engine, you could easily stick on something else. The the wrecking ball could go on something else. The bed of the truck could go on something else. You could use the wheels on a different vehicle. Like it's it's so it's so interchangeable in the best way. Some of the best things about playing orcs is that if you want to use this stuff, it looks good. Like the vehicles look good. They all look pretty well, mm, we'll get to that in a second. Most of them look really decent. Um but they're also just an absolute treasure trove of orc bits for taking other vehicles and mashing them together and creating two completely unique creations that still fulfill the role. Now, look, I have to say the 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 biker the biker mob. I'm pretty sure this is. I am pretty sure this is what was around when I played orcs. I could be wrong. I think they are. I don't know how re like how whether they've had a redesign relatively recently or not, I have to admit. But I think they look decent. I think this is a kit that's aging pretty well. The way the weapons are attached to the back, I I actually quite like a lot. Again, it's that kind of asymmetrical nature to things which I, I really appreciate. The uh the big old like power axe thing that he's got. I really like that weapon in particular. I mean, his arm is on my uh, <laughs> is on my Chaos Lord. That's how much I like it. Uh, and the bikes do look decent. They do look good. Like the little details with... Uh, is it just the one or is it two of them that got tracks? It's just the one, isn't it? Like one of them having tracks instead of a wheel. They They look... They look functional, but they also look personal. And they look like they've been customised to some extent for the rider... I think it's a really cool kit. I think it. I think it's aged well. And the thing is, with stuff like orcs, when a space marine bike looks like it would just be completely unusable on anything other than tarmac, it's like, okay, guys, how do you plan on driving over even the smallest of hills with that particular design? And it doesn't look believable. The thing is, orcs come with their own, their own like element of disbelief. They come with their own suspension of disbelief because you know stuff works even though it really shouldn't and it kind of doesn't matter as much for them because it's a case of well 
You'd think that if it went over a severe bump, it would wreck the engine. But if the orc didn't think that it did wreck the engine, the chances are it'd probably be fine. And then again, they're built together from scrap and random nonsense anyway, so it's not even like it would be much to repair it or make a new one. Like, they wouldn't care. Kind of the suspension of disbelief that comes from orcs makes their vehicle so much more robust in just a sort of attitude way, which I like a lot. I think, yeah, I think they've, I think they're aging pretty well. I think they look decent. I think that's a decent kit. Now, we're going on to the, the newer vehicles here. So we've got the Shock Jump Dragster. Now, one of the, this is another one where I really like these models. I would, I'd be lying if I said I don't like the vast majority of these. Like, the Shock Jump Dragster, I really like. That big mincing thing on the front of it is horrendous. The kind of spiky blade sticking out the side of it. The uh, the, <laughs> the grot operated gun with a little targeting squig is hilarious. You've got, I mean, just the fact that it like does little weird jumps and stuff. I like it a lot. I, however, I do also understand those who don't who say that it's like, well, how have they got this kind of unified design? I will say with a lot of these new kits, mixing and matching to create your own variations of these things, I don't think. It doesn't strike me as looking like it could be too difficult to do. You know, like if you want to run a shock jump, a uh, shock jump dragster, and say a, oh, and say like a a, a mega track scrap jet, there is no reason why you couldn't take the treads off that and put them on the back of that, or 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 take like take the spoiler off that and put it on there or. It looks to me, I mean, looking at the like, actually looking at the sprues, a lot of the stuff is is pretty interchangeable if you're prepared to mess about a bit. Which you know, if you if you're going for your own unique take on vehicles for orcs, you can you can totally hack about and and mess about with stuff. I think the model itself is is really cool, but I do understand those who are like, well, it doesn't feel orky to have them all have the same design. It's kind of a necessity of of actually selling vehicles for orcs, though, isn't it? So it's kind of one of those things where you can still adapt, I feel like. But it is it is ridiculous. I mean, completely smooth tyres is so is so ludicrous for what the vehicle actually is, but I love it because it's it's just one of those little mad details. So the again, like the the custom booster blaster is is relatively sensible actually. Maybe a little bit low to the ground, but again, I I love like the the fact it's got like two engines by the look of it, both with blowers. Like it's it's so excessive. There's like there's six exhausts on either side, so there's twelve exhausts on this thing. It is a proper little hot rod with a massive cannon attached to the back. It's got like, two sets of wheels on the back. I love this thing. It, I mean, it's obviously a lot of this stuff is is quite Mad Max, uh, understandably so. But I just cannot bring myself to dislike any part of this model. I love it. I absolutely love this thing. If I did orcs, I would happily run like three of these just for the sake of having them. I would obviously mess about with them a little bit because how could you not? But it's it's such a it is such a cool vehicle. Yeah, I mean it's just. <laughs> <laughs> the number of exhausts alone, I love. So mad and over the top. The the Death Killer War Trike. I do like this a lot. Do you mind? I do like this a lot, but I don't know. I feel like I feel like that front tire. There's something I don't like about the the smoothness of it. I like almost everything else about this vehicle. The ridiculous engine, the like chariot sort of uh, spiky wheels on the sides, the fact the driver's got, <laughs> got like a, a shooter and a, and he's got his face covered over. All of these things are fun and uh, and cool, but that that very front double wheel just feels odd to me, and I've never been able to work out why. Also, the fact that it's got the little wheels so that when it accelerates too hard and <laughs> does a wheelie, it doesn't flip over. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. It, it's, it's, a, it's a mad vehicle. 
it's a properly mad vehicle and that's why I like it so much plus the war boss looks ridiculously threatening yeah it's solid it is solid that it looks so good now the scrap jet the scrap jet I do like but of all of them I, I don't know I, I like it but there's just bits and pieces of it that make it not not perfect for me but I can't even work out what it is what it is that isn't quite sitting right. I've never been able to work it out with this thing. I don't know if it's the fact that the driver clearly can't see over the top of the front of the the front of the car. I don't know whether it's the fact that it has got the tracks on the back when it feels like they don't quite fit, although that in itself is quite orky. I don't know. There's just something about the scrap jet that just doesn't sit quite right, and I'd love to be able to work out what it is. Maybe if it didn't have the wings, so the silhouette was a bit cleaner? Oh, it's so difficult. It's like, I, I like it, but there's something about it that just is not quite there for me, and I just cannot figure out what it is. I'm not sure about the missile launching off the side, maybe. That's like only one small thing. Oh, maybe it's some of the kind of inaction elements of it. Like the, the, the bullets... Stop it. The bullets kind of like... The empty shell casing and the, the, the missile launching. Maybe it's that. Maybe that's kind of making it feel a bit strange. Very small and specific, though. And I'd not really noticed those before, so I don't know. That's a difficult one. That is a difficult one, that. Yeah, there's just just something not quite right about it. One day I'll work out what it is. Maybe, if I'm lucky. The Boondacker Snazwagon. Again, I do quite like this. The overt Mad Max reference on the front is funny, if a little bit too overt. Uh, <laughs> but it's again, it's a it's another solid vehicle. Which I again looking at the uh sprue for it it's just a wealth of parts to use on other things and to mix and match you can do whatever you like with it by the look of it it's that's a very forgiving vehicle to build you know you can yeah it feels like there's a lot there that you can swap and change and mess with which is pretty perfect for orcs it is it is a good looking vehicle though I especially like the, the addition of like the wall paint and stuff on the orcs on this one. I know that's a purely a paint job thing, but I do like that a lot. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks pretty decent. I will say, in comparison, the Rooker Truck Squig Buggy is, if anything, a little bland. It is a little bland. Like, compared to that, and that, and, and that, and... Uh, yeah, the, the Rooker Truck Squig Buggy is a bit... A bit utilitarian, almost. A bit... Not... I, I don't know whether it lacklustre is the word. It's just not as exciting. There's not as much going on. It doesn't look as powerful, as strong, as fast, or anything like that. Which, I mean, it doesn't necessarily need to be fast, fast, but... Yeah, it, it, it's lacking... It's lacking personality, I think, is the thing. I think this is a vehicle that relies on the crew to give it the personality. Like, it's relying on the other orcs inside it to really elevate it. But the, the base design just isn't interesting enough for them to really... For them to really do much. It's like everything else in, in the new line of uh, of orc vehicles. The, well, I say new. The newish line of orc vehicles. Everything is a sports car, a sports car, and then you've got the... Uh, the rocker truck squig buggy, which is just like a battered old pickup in comparison. Everything else looks like like fast and exciting, and then you got this, which doesn't look either of those things, unfortunately. Just it just doesn't have the same excitement than the others do. It's not bad. I wouldn't say it's bad, it's just a bit bland. A bit bland for me. Oh, God. 
All right, let me just have a quick drink here. We're not going to go into this again. We're not going to do another, like, 40 minutes, half an hour of how shit the Death Copter is. How utter garbage it is. How it doesn't fit with the rest of the range even remotely anymore. Especially since the new vehicles came out, which make it look like even more shoddy than it already was. We're not going to talk about the fact that the pilot doesn't match any of the other orcs at this stage or how it looks like a basically just a gyrocopter from age of sigma we're not going to talk about any of that we're just going to move on it's garbage on to actual good aircraft because orcs do have them they do have them i mean the daca jet the wasbomb blaster jet the burner bomber and uh, the blitzer bomber i like all four of them i mean for god's sake look at it how does that look anything like that how does that match that? That matches that. And it matches like that. Doesn't bloody match that though, does it? Why? Because that's a anyway. I like the Daka Jet and I like I like all the variations of these. I think they're all decent looking aircraft. I think they're some of the most believable aircraft in 40k, especially compared to the Imperial stuff for the most part. Apart from the Valkyrie, Valkyrie gets a pass, the Valkyrie looks like it would actually fly. All of the uh, Space Marine stuff just looks ridiculous and as though it would never even function. And of course, how aerodynamic and feasible these are, I'm not like a. And I don't even know the. I uh, don't even know the term. Air, 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 no, air. I'm not a plane builder, so I couldn't tell you exactly how uh, how feasible these are. But they look more feasible than most, by quite some margin. You know, at the very basic end of it, the wings look like they're on in the right order, and uh, they're not just boxes. So, they're already doing better than most. They do look good, though. They do look good. I mean, some of these are, some of these are getting on a bit now, but they... I don't know, they've aged pretty well. I mean, even that, which is mental, like the Wasbomb Blaster Jet, which is a, it's an absurd vehicle. It's so... It's like, it's so mental... It's covered in guns. It's got like the big, uh, the big like um, air intake on the top there. Uh, it's it's mad, but it looks so cool. It looks so cool. If anything, the burner, the burner bomber, and the blitzer bomber are relatively relatively restrained in some ways, but they do look good. Both of them do. Yeah, there's just there's no complaints about. It. No complaints about these at all. I think I would happily have an entire force of just all aircraft. And I'm not just talking like uh, aeronautical inferiority, I'm talking actual 40k. Because they, they just look awesome. <laughs> they just look so good. Oh, I love it. Love it. Okay, now we're getting on to the infantry side of things. So there's the custom mega cannon and all the variations thereof. There's you know there's a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of these, which I say a bunch, three or four, either way. There, there's a good number. I I do like these because of the amount of detail on them. There's there's a there's a cool amount of detail. Like on the back, you've got the like little control panel with the keyboard, all the different wires and. Yeah, there's there's some nice touches on these things, and of course you get some uh, you get some of the boys with it. Which I mean, look at them; they're they're actually really cool. <laughs> I really like the way they've been done. They look great. I think I think that's I think they're a, that's a cool kit. I think that's a cool kit with some nice little details and some nice some uh, yes, just some nice work's gone into it. It is fun. It's definitely a fun kit. Yeah, I like those a lot. Now, the Mega Knobs, I, 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 I do like them. I worry that they're going to look even more clunky and, and, uh, and, and not quite... Like a bit too square. Now that we've got the new Gazgul, because, I mean, the old Gazgul had... You know the traditional mega armor, which looks basically exactly the same as this. Very, very blocky and angular, and uh, 
you know, a hugely reduced range of movement. They've very much got the classic Space Marine Terminator posing going on these, you know, with the arms just kind of not straight out in front, but as close, as close as makes no difference. And they can kind of get away with it, but they've always looked a bit awkward and a bit stiff. The new Gazgol, I think, is just going to make that far worse, if anything. Now, I don't think they should be super lithe and uh, manoeuvrable, because they're orcs, and so their mega armor is not going to be capable of that. But there is a dynamic element to the new Gazgol that these guys simply don't have, and it makes me wonder if they're not going to suffer a little bit as a result of that, just by looking, just by looking a bit too dated. I do like them. Don't get me wrong, I do like them. They are, I think they are getting on a little bit now. I forget exactly how old the kit is. I think this also builds the uh, the um, mech boy in mega armor as well. I think. But yeah, they 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 do still look decent. I think Gauss is going to make them look more dated though. Flash Gits, on the other hand, I think this kit is doing is I I think it's doing pretty well. I really like these. There's a there's a really fun amount of customization that you can do with the weapons. So you can have no two guns amongst these guys look the same. There's a there's a huge amount you can do to differentiate between them, which is a really nice touch. I mean, just looking at it there, you can clearly see no two of those guns look the same. Some parts might be similar, but overall they all have very different appearances, which I like a lot. And uh, I'd say there's a, there's a decent variation in trophies as well. There's obviously a few that are, that are the same or similar, but this is one of those, like another of those instances where you can get away with doing a bit of chopping here and there and make a group that's properly fully unique from from member to member. But the the strength is definitely the weapons. That is the big strength of this kit. They are, uh, yeah, they're, they're they're so adaptable and they can be made to be so unique from from one boy to the other. It's a really nice touch. It's honestly, I think, one of the one of the coolest kits Games Workshop's done for customization by far. Just having that number of options. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's it's a uh, it's it's obviously totally appropriate for the flash kits, but. It shows they've thought about it, you know. Yeah, I like them. Now, the, I I was honestly surprised. I didn't realise that the uh, the Gretchen. Whilst I was getting things set up to record this, I didn't realise that this was actually plastic. I thought Gretchen were all still were all still resin to some degree, but Gretchen being plastic is is cool. I I will say this guy again. He looks like he's aged a bit. A bit weird compared to a lot of the other orcs now. He looks older. Like, just the style of it looks a bit older. I don't know if it's because he's got a big old belly going on or whether he's got a bit of a weird face, but he doesn't quite match a lot of the current boys to me. It's not a bad model, but, yeah, it's just a bit strange. I think the Gretchen look fine. The Gretchen look cool. <laughs> so... Oh, they're so good. Yeah, I really do like the Gretchen a lot. What I mean, what what an expression on that lad. <laughs> He's loving it. He's absolutely loving it. I mean, it, yeah, this must this this has to be like a, an older one. You can even if you can't look at the date on the sprues, just uh, just looking at the spacing on them can often give a decent a decent idea as to how, how old the kit is. The older the kit, and in some cases, like the way like the they're massively inefficient compared to newer to newer kits. Um having built a couple of Primaris intercessors, like actually just the the, the normal box of them um over the last couple of days, th there's so much packed in. There's so much packed in. I mean the Centurion kit for the Space Marines was previously like the the standard I thought for ramming as much as you could in that or you know the uh, little baby Imperial Knights for uh, Adeptus Titanicus they're all super efficient with how the space is handled uh, things like this there's just so many so many gaps like does it need to be that big that sprue could you not fit all of it into 
like two thirds of the space. He probably could if he wanted to, but it's it's kind of it's like a. I think from from what I've like just from anecdotal like observation, it feels like you can sort of you can sort of roughly date how old things are by kind of looking at the layout of this stuff, which in this case definitely older. Now, we're moving on to a few characters and stuff. So, Mad Doc Grotznik, I'm reasonably sure he's resin, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, five five components isn't too bad. I don't think he's aged too bad. I, I can't speak for how easy he is to put together. But I think I think Grotznik is, Grotznik is still looking okay. There's some nice detail on him. Like, all the stitching and stuff on him is really well done. And he is creepy and weird, which he should be. I think he's not doing too bad, you know. Age-wise, I think he's I think he's okay. And I will say for for resin, it looks like a lot of those details are, are pretty nice and clean. Yeah, it looks looks all right. Now we've got the uh, orc war boss with big chopper, who I mean this model is this model's old. I think this is plastic, isn't it? A one metal orc war boss with big chopper. Hang on, I'm confused. I didn't see another orc war boss whilst I was getting this set up. I've got a plastic version that's very similar to that somewhere. Anyway, I've also got the metal version. In fact, I've got that. Think about it. Yeah, I've got this one. I've also got the one out of. Was it Black Reach? Was that the other one? Because that's the one that had the death copters that aren't dog shit. Um, so, is there no way to get a plastic war boss? Just a standard plastic war boss? Is that not a thing? Did I not see that? Did I miss it? I may maybe I missed it. Hmm. I mean the fact that it's still metal is shocking. If it's if it's like if that's just like a legacy one that's hanging around, then fine. If I've missed the plastic one, then fine. But otherwise, that's not good, is it? And why didn't they do something with the plastic one? I know I've got one. I think it's in this room somewhere. What? Anyway. Zagstruck, I believe he's resin as well. Uh, if not metal, no resin. He's he's still he's more up to date. He's more up to date than that war boss. I think he's. I uh, I don't know if he's. I wouldn't say he's aging badly. I think he's all right. I think he's okay. The pose isn't too bad. I think the pose works pretty well. The horrible scissor feet are kind of cool. The he looks like he's got no waist due to the size of the belt, but then again, I don't know if that's really a problem. I think there are some cool things about this model. I do like actually no, I do like the pose. The head I think is pretty decent as well. Yeah, I quite like Zagstruck. Yeah, it looks okay. Now Snickrot, I think this is one of the best sculpts that Games Workshop's done. Genuinely, I I really like Snickrot, and I especially like the uh, the paint scheme they've done in for this. I think he looks really, really good. The crazy, the crazy like visor he's got over his head with all the different kind of tactical lenses and the like look really cool. The uh, very over the top knives he's holding look awesome. I, 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 Snickerot is one of my favourites. Uh, genuinely one of my favourites. I think he looks really, really good, and I don't think he's aged badly at all, at all. I. The paint job is a little bit different to a lot of other stuff in the range, but he looks decent. Like, he, he really does. He really does look decent. Bad Rook, I think, is a tad busy. <laughs> I think he's a tad busy, and I think... Uh, uh, I don't know. The gun looks a bit boring now. The gun looks a little bit plain, um, which is a shame, given all the other Flash gets a lot. They've got great-looking guns. His is a little bit... A little bit old, a bit dated now. I mean, I appreciate a pirate's hat as much as the next man, but I think uh, I think there's a bit too much going on in some places and not enough going on in others, which is... Yeah. Yeah, I just don't think he's aging that well. The, the orc mech, I don't mind. I think this is a decent-looking model. The fact that one of his eye lenses seems to be a screw is weird, and uh, and I'm not really sure how that works, but there are some nice details overall on this guy. Like, the backpack's got some fun detail on it for a start. 
the big spanner he's got. Sorry, sorry, wrench. And, uh, yeah, like the frayed cabling, the hallmark of, in fairness, Chaos and Orcs. He does look decent. He does look decent. He, he's, he's good. He's good. He's fine. He's also plastic, which is nice. The Weird Boy, I think, is getting a bit dated now. I think definitely getting a bit dated. There's some weird, dodgy stuff going on here and there. By the way the chains work, I don't know what's happening with that chain. That's odd. I don't understand why it's been sculpted that way. It's very angular, but not in a believable way. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it just needs a refresh. Just a refresh. Nothing like massively major, but could do being brought up to scratch a little bit. It just doesn't look quite right anymore. Orc Knob with Wah Banner is, I think, okay. The face, again, is looking a bit different. It looks a little bit older than quite a few of the others. But there's some nice touches on this model that I really like. Like I like the gun. I think the gun looks cool. The banner itself is awesome. And uh, the fist that he's holding it in, that, that like power fist that isn't just a big claw, I actually really like that. It's a weird model, this one. It's like an odd mix of stuff that would look totally appropriate on newer stuff and things that are very much reminiscent of the older style, the, the face particularly. So it's a strange one. It's a strange one, that. The Pain Boy, it still looks cool. I still like the Pain Boy. He's creepy, he's weird, he's horrible, he's big claw that's also syringes and a buzzsaw and a scalpel and god knows what else is still horrific um <laughs> the fact that his foot is also a is also a like a knife is still hilarious i still love that i think i think the pain boy is quality yeah i i really like the pain boy that's a good model so the storm boys i think have aged pretty decent to be honest, I I I I like the Storm Boys a lot. Um, yeah, I, I I think they look good. I think they look good. There's a nice mix of kind of uh, unique approaches to to jump packs on them, which is fun. Some of the detail of like the armor that they've got is cool. Like I really I really like that that jump pack. That looks really good. I, I like a storm boy. I don't like the fact that that one is just a bunch of missiles taped together, and then stuffed, stuffed into a, <laughs> into another section, stuff like that. Like the little details of those, it, it's it's cool. It's good. Some of the poses are a bit weird. Like that's a bit more static than you'd really want it to be, and some of them just sort of look like they're hovering there. Which I don't know. It could do with more kind of interesting and dynamic movement but there's a nice amount of variety between all of them and again it is a plastic kit so there is that which is nice yeah and yeah storm boys storm boys look cool the burner boys look great no complaint about the burner boys i really like the one with the full mask on um not because necessarily because he's wearing a full mask i just think the full mask looks awesome they all look good but he especially looks threatening the uh, the knob leading them does look cool as well. The massive wrench on his back is quality. Yeah, they they they're pretty awesome. A lot of their posture looks weird now. I'm looking at it. Oh, I bet. You, I wonder if you can flip that visor down, or whether it's just stuck up, or whether you could just glue it over his face. Oh, that that's that is a question. That I really like as well. Again, again, the variety in the backpacks, like where all the fuel stored for the burners, I like that a lot. That's cool. So yeah, the guy with the uh, with the visor that's facing up, and the one with the kind of gas mask that's really down, I do like those. Oh god, it's so so spaced out. <laughs> oh Jesus, um, I'm just trying to see if I can see that visor and see whether that is something that you could put down because that'd be fun if you could but despite how massively like, oh yeah there it is yeah you could easily put that just over the face couldn't you nice that's a nice bit of uh 
Nice bit of added customization there. That's cool. God, the, 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 just the amount of gap on the sprues. It, I just They've gotten so much better at it, it's unreal. <laughs> okay, uh, the knobs. No complaints. I still, I still, I love these guys. I love them. I think they look great. They look beefy. They look chunky. Mean. Everything you want. Everything you want. I haven't really got any complaints about these at all. Some of the posing maybe could do with being a bit better. Having them a bit more poseable would probably be nice, but they they still look good. They yeah, they really do look good. I don't know what it is. I really like these. I think the boys are starting to get a bit old now, but the the knobs, the knobs still look decent. But I'm not really sure why. I don't know. It's because of the added like the extra. Like the size of them, or whether they just seem to have more personality, I, I I can't really tell. But I think they've aged pretty. I think they've aged pretty well for the most part. Those guys. I really do. The looters. <laughs> the looters suffer from a, a specific issue that stems entirely from the um, stems entirely from the way they hold their guns. Also, I've just noticed the burner... Wait, is the burner and the looters have the same... The same knob leading them? They do, don't they? Oh, is it the same kit? Is that what... No, it's not the same kit, is it? Of course it's not the same kit. That feels... Well, I'm just going to say it. That just feels lazy. That feels a bit lazy. That feels lazy. It's just the same guy. Oh, I don't know. I, that's that's irritating me. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, what was I talking about? Yeah, the looters have a, a slight issue in their in in like the lack of variety. Like the burners are all holding their guns in a similar way, but they're not all the same way. And there's some variation in terms of the like the uh, the backpacks they have with the fuel in them. There's some variation in the straps holding them up, like holding the, holding the burners up. There's variation in the faces. There's, they don't all look the same. Like at a glance, they all look similar, but they don't all look the same. The issue that I have with the looters is that at a glance, they they just look identical. Like there is variation there. Don't get me wrong. There is variation. Clearly, there is. The guns are are different, and the, you know, they they too have different backpacks and stuff. But the heads are a lot more similar, and the poses are almost uniformly the same. They have to be because of the design of the guns. They're firing forwards, so they need to be standing legs apart arms in a certain direction, just firing forwards. That, even though there is variation in the models, they look more individual. Even though the poses are, are similar, they're not exactly the same, and you can quickly pick out smaller differences a lot more quickly than when you look at that. That, at a glance, they all just look identical, which they're not, but, you know, that, that, first, that first look counts for a lot, when it comes to building up your squads and stuff, and it's just because of how they've got the guns. But the the way they're holding the guns and the gun the guns themselves, I think are pretty like they're pretty iconic and they look cool. It's it's just a limitation of of that, I think, more than anything else. Like if you if you just kind of look away and then look, it's like, oh, is that the same model for? No, it's not. Okay, they are different. Whereas you just don't get that with the burners, or at least I don't. Anyway, they're not not quite to the same extent. Yeah, I did. They, I still, I do still like looters, but they are very much uh, inhibited in terms of all having to stand exactly the same, pretty much. Which is, I, you know, I mind you, I, I say all of this. If you've got a massive horde of orcs. Are you going to be looking that closely anyway? Are they not all going to look pretty similar? So, yeah. Ah, oh, the boys. The boys, the boys. Same. I'm 99% sure this is exactly the same kit that I had when I built my orc army. <laughs> so old. So old. Lads. Lads, you're getting on a bit. God, you're not that... You're probably not that far. I mean, that was... I I I joined at like the start of third. 
Stars. Yeah, not that. F yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same. I don't know that they're. I don't know that they're different. I don't think they are. Like I'm looking at them, and I, I literally recognise like bits and pieces and heads. I still have some of this stuff in my bits boxes. I think they are still the same, aren't they? God, lads, you just you just getting on a bit. You are getting on a bit, boys. You are getting on a bit. They don't look bad. Don't get me wrong. They don't look bad. It just feels like. I mean, how long can you go without a refresh? How long can you go? The sprues are a lot more reasonable. I'll give them that. At least I think they are, anyway. Is that 2007? 2007 on that sprue? What are we on? 2020? So 2007? Mm. No, I think... Oh, mind you, if they've repackaged it at any point, if they've, if they've changed the way that the distribution is... And the sprues, then the sprues will be newer than the actual sculpts, and the actual sculpts, I guess. <laughs> they they're classic. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I don't know if they actually need up. Do they need updating? I I feel like they do just because of how old they are. But then again, do they actually, or is it just that want of something new and shiny? I don't know. I don't know. So it's tricky because I do like them. I do like them, but yeah. Oh, you know, maybe they are newer. Maybe these ones are newer than the ones I had. I'm start. I'm seeing things that I'm not entirely sure I recognise now. Like the little skull on the bottom of the the bottom of that guy's blade, maybe. Or did I just never use that one? Maybe just never use that part. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Let's move on before I have some sort of aneurysm. Okay, the big mech with the shark attack gun. I I like this model. I think it's cool. It's silly. <laughs> it's very silly, but... Yeah. It's such a massive gun. and like It's so absurd how large it is. Oh, how did he even... How did he even lift it? What a beast. What an absolute, absolute beast. It's like supported on both shoulders because it's so chunky. Yeah, it's it's that is a fun model. That is definitely a fun model. No complaints about that one from me. The Orc Commandos, I believe these are still resin. Let's have a quick check. Yeah, it is. It is resin. I thought it was. I think they look okay. I don't think they look terrible. They don't look super dated. But then again, I mean, some of this stuff is is kind of hidden behind things like masks and stuff. I think the weapons are a bit thick, maybe. A little bit too chunky in some places, but some of the heads, again, don't don't 100% match the uh, the more recent stuff. Especially the, like the, the newer vehicles, obviously, but they do still look decent, I think. The one with his full face covered with like a gas mask thing and just the little eyes is weird as anything. Orcs just shouldn't have that. It just looks odd. It just looks so odd. The tank busters are dated. They are... Some of them feel like properly... The guy on the left there is feels mega dated. That is a kit that needs refreshing. That is definitely a kit that needs refreshing. I mean, the squigs are cool, but I'm assuming these are resin as well. They've got to be, right? Yeah. Yep. Finely detailed. Mm. No, nah, that's not fair. The detail's okay. I wouldn't like to have to clean some of these up with some of the finer bits on there, but... Again, it's, I think some of the faces just don't look like it. <laughs> the one on that, that one on the left may as well be from something completely different. Just does not match. Just doesn't match at all. Ah, lads, yeah, you just you're just looking a bit you're just looking a bit old now. You're just looking a bit old. I mean he's cool. Don't get me wrong, but Yeah. Older at the very least. Now yeah, the, the big mech in Mega Armor. I quite like it. I do like that. I do like that variation of it. 
it's a bit top heavy, but then again, it's orcish, so does it really matter? Yeah, I think I think it's a decent looking. I think that's a decent looking, uh, decent looking model. Definitely going to look extremely clunky next to Gazgul with the big mass of guns on the top of him, but it does look cool. Which it looks very mad scientist, which is you know mad scientist, mad engineer, I guess. But that's what you want, isn't it? Okay, hang on. So I, I've, we've done the range review, and I, I'm conv like I feel like I've missed something. So I filtered orcs and HQ, and I'm just going through to have a quick look and see if I've missed something because it looked when we were going through it like the, the orc war boss with big chopper, the metal one, was the only war boss, like plastic war boss that you could buy. And I got confused because I knew I'm, I must I knew I must have missed something somewhere. So Mega Nobs, we don't want that. We don't want Zagstruck, Snickerot, Bad Rook, Weird Boy, or either the Mechs, Death Killer War Trike, Orc War Boss Grux Boss Mob. Okay. So we've got we've got Grux Boss Mob. And that's it. Well, I mean okay. Well, I'm assuming he's plastic. So let's have a look at him. So hang on, wait a minute. You can either have the metal one for 15 quid, or you can buy Grook with knobs, or you don't get a war boss. That's, that's it. You just you just don't get one. Those are your two options. A metal one, or one in a pack with five other models. That I mean, maybe you do want a five knobs every time you have a war boss. I don't know. That seems unlikely, but maybe you do. Maybe, whatever. All right. So, these are the lads, fine. They're just normal knobs, by the look of it. Yeah, they're just knobs. There's nothing special about them. We've already looked at them. Uh, okay, so Grook. Grook looks exactly how I remember, because Grook was... Was he black? Was he... Was he part of that box? No, because I've got one that was part of that box that didn't have the little saw blade. He had, like, a normal power claw and no squig, I want to say. So who have I got? I've got a plastic one from somewhere that looks pretty much the same as this. I forget what his name was. Hmm, okay. So, alright. These guys are just knobs, right? Yeah, they are just knobs. Now what's the sprue situation then? Because presumably he's attached to the others or they wouldn't be sold like all... It's not, is it? It's going to be a separate sprue. Yeah, that's so that's all the weapons and stuff. His weapon is not on there. That's four of the bodies, some more weapons that is on, on there. I can see where this is going. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen the fourth sprue. You don't need to tell me. You don't need to shout at the screen. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> so he's on his own sprue. See, so like, he just can't buy him by himself. No, that's not allowed. Can't have him. You either buy the metal one if you want a standalone, or you spend 3250 and get a war boss and five knobs. There's no middle ground if you want a war boss in plastic. You just can't. You can't get a standalone one. Why is that? What have they done that for? That's it's just flat out stupid. Why would you not? Do, why would you only make? I mean, I get that he's. I mean, technically he's named. I think you can only get like you can only get like Calgar with his. Is it the Victrix guard? But he's a named character, and you can still buy a Space Marine Captain. Like a Primaris captain or a chaplain or or whatever. You can still buy a Space Marine captain without having to get a named one that comes with a bodyguard. And like what about like uh like all the like Raven Guard like, like Shrike and and Agatone and and Torgaridon and all of that lot, they're all named, but they don't have a bodyguard. So why is Grook only available? With five knobs when he's on his own separate sprue. Why is he not just the generic war boss? Why couldn't he buy him separately? What sense does that make? What the hell? Oh, I want a single war boss. Okay, well, you can either buy one in metal or you can buy five other models that you didn't want. What? What? <laughs> what sense does that make? They've not. I mean. Eh? Alright, let's have a quick. Hmm, let's do, a, let's do a comparison. Let's do a comparison. Jane's are okay, currently unavailable, but you know, no one else is available either. I mean, I don't see it saying Jane's are and five howling banshees. I don't see that. That's not here. It's not like she's only available with five other random schmucks, is it? 
How the... What? <laughs> what sense does that make? Anyway. <laughs> what? Oh my god. That's the range review for the Orcs. It went off the rails real bad at the end there. This is like a massive long recording. Um, why? 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 I like most of it. I don't like that. <laughs> what is the point of that? That is that is ludicrous. To sell it separately, for the love of God. Look at it. It's its own separate thing. It's on its own sprue. What is your problem? Sell it individually. Don't make him name. Just make him the generic one. Don't have the B option between Orc Warboss with... Big chopper in metal and nothing. What is wrong with you? Oh my god. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of all that in the comments down below if you managed to last all the way to the end. Ugh. Feel free to use the affiliate link in the description. You know how it works by now. I'll leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. Now, I'll see you next time. <laughs> Why? <laughs>